it is said that the word of God will be like folly to those who are perishing, but it will be the power of God to those who believe. Today we're going to be discussing something about what reading the Bible does, and I can give you first-hand accounts on what it has done in my life from start A to now reading the Bible every single day and understanding it more and more. It's basically the same thing as like reading a textbook, except this actually will do something incredible. Like I said, this is a, a Corinthians verse that it's going to be like the power of God to you if you read it every single day. It doesn't have to be like 17 pages, but if you consistently read this, there's going to be a couple things that you will start to understand and you'll be able to have an outside look towards what is happening in the world. So number one is going to be that you're going to understand how to be a man. This is the whole reason why I say this is like the first point, but this is going to be one of the most important points behind this. And basically you start understanding what it takes to be a man. And what I started seeing when I started reading the Bible, I started understanding certain things. I started reading certain verses and understanding why my life is going a different route than I would have expected. And I started seeing more and more that when you look at the outside world, there's a reason why they're pushing a lot of different things on you. Now it may not be all strategic, but some of it actually is that they are pushing and, and sort of brainwashing you into thinking that there's a certain way that you need to be. And it goes for women and for men. Basically what they do is what you can see, honestly, when you look around is that men are all supposed to be players and, you know, billionaires and that women are supposed to be <laughs> and they're supposed to be able to get whatever dude sexually that they want and this is what you start realizing when it comes to the Bible and understanding how important fatherhood is and how important masculinity actually is into the status of what the world is going like and you'll start understanding that there's a reason why the world is kind of or, or especially in America is is imploding it's because of the lack of masculinity the lack of biblical masculinity but I don't even like calling it that it's actual masculinity it's the following of the creator of who you were created by and obviously following these things it will turn you into the epitome of a man and what drastically changed in my life is I started realizing that a lot of stuff that I was doing was it was very childish it was very selfish it was very self-centered you start reading the Bible, you start understanding, especially when you start reading the Gospels, you'll realize what the traits are and obviously how Jesus acted. It is the exact way that you should try and act whenever it comes to whatever daily life that you have. And this is something that slowly started changing me uh, step by step and brick by brick essentially, that I started realizing that the way that the world was basically making me do things and be, it was like, Number one, it's not even me. It's not even what I wanted to be. And number two, it's not real. This is the stuff that leads to a lot of depression and anxiety and, you know, they put you on pills and all that stuff because you're not actually being the man that you're supposed to be. And a lot of people want to look at the Bible and they, they get mad at it because you think it's a bunch of rules that you don't want to follow anymore. But it's actually childish to think this because what ends up happening is you start realizing, number one, again, you are doing a lot of childish, selfish things and that the world isn't revolved around being selfish and childish and doing all of those things, but actually looking out for people and not just trying to do good, but actually understanding what is actually good. And you'll understand that you tend to want to do bad. You tend to want to do evil and that when you follow this book, you start understanding what is actually good and that it's very hard. It's very hard to be good. So you start understanding the traits of a man and what a man is supposed to be selfless, a servant to others, you know, protector of others, a leader of others. You start realizing that as you go through the gospels and as you start reading the different things that Jesus will say, and not even just Jesus, but just God does throughout the entire Old Testament and new, you start realizing that this is the way that we were supposed to be and how far off that we are from it because of what the world has designed us as, because the world has been twisted to pretend like this isn't real. And this is what I'll get to in my second point, is that this stuff is real. 
this is real history. You can look at archaeological digs and you're going to find literally the stories that you see in the Bible. You will find in real life out there in the world, in Israel. You will find these places and these spots and these events that actually happened scientifically proven to have existed around the same day and age and have happened in the same exact way that it was stated in the Bible. So when you start realizing that the world is trying to tell you that this book is just this Greek mythological, you know, fake story that you can listen to, you tend to think that you don't need to read it because you don't need to hear it. And then you start, you know, going to history classes, learning about George Washington and things like that. But what you don't realize is that this isn't a mythology book. This is a history book. This is people writing events that actually happened in real life because there is a God. There is one and that there's not multiple. There's just one and that these events actually happened. This is what changed my entire life. When I realized that this is real, it's not fictitious. It's not, you know, just grasping for something. It is a real book of real events that actually happened with real people. When you look at this, you know, again, people want to make believe this book. Jesus scientifically proven was a real person in real life, in history. There is actual proof scientifically that Jesus existed. There's not, I think there's maybe like one scientist at this point that will refute it and that guy's just kind of an idiot. There is scientific proof of Jesus existing. There's scientific proof of the wars that happened in the the, the Bible, in the scripture. There's scientific proof of places that were actually stated literally to the T in the world. And then when you start realizing is that this book on top of being the traits that, you know, will lead you to being the most happy, the most masculine, you start realizing that this stuff is real and that you have a God that cares about you and that loves you. And this is what changes everything. Because again, when I first started, um, going to church, you know, there's a difference between going to church and actually reading the Bible. And I think this is something that really needs to be nailed into the, the, the world right now is that going to church, many churches are more like motivational speeches at this point. That's kind of what a church is about. A lot of churches are just motivational speeches, but when you actually read the Bible, you start realizing that this is a real thing, that this is not just you know, you go to a church and you hear somebody preach and you feel really good for a second and then you go and do whatever you were doing before. What you start realizing is that this is, there's an actual God that is still surrounding us with, you know, Jesus at his right hand side, looking at us and, and loving us and trying to guide us the right way. And at the end of the day, what you are also end up realizing is that throughout the Bible, God appreciates and fulfills free will because if he didn't we would all be like robots we wouldn't be human beings so he appreciates free will he's trying to steer us towards the right path so when you start reading the bible you start seeing these events one by one and of course if you look at um certain videos and you'll start seeing that these things are are fully like Things that were set on fire in the Bible actually were set on fire in real life in the same exact time they were they were uh, dated. What do you call it? Chrome dated? Not chrome dated. They were uh, I forgot what the actual wording is, but they were dated to the actual time and place that is in the Bible. So you start understanding you're reading history. You're not reading mythology, and that's what makes it a big difference because. You start realizing that there has been a God that's been fighting for you since the beginning, has consistently been fighting for you. And that the reason the world is the way it is is because we have consistently tried to fall away from God. We have consistently tried to follow other gods. We've consistently tried to move away from this because over and over again, we don't hang on because free will is tough. A lot of people want to sit there and say that, you know, a good God would give you everything. But if he gave you everything, there was well, there would be no happiness because everything would just be a, a, a baseline. There would be no actual happiness in life and joy. What comes with free will is joy because you have a choice to do 
good, bad, or the other. And you 69% of you are not subscribed to the channel. If you just hit that subscribe button, it helps me make better content. So please do me that favor. If you want to support the channel, just hit that subscribe button. The choice to do anything in your life. This is what makes our God the only God. And again, at the end of the day, you start realizing that there is a choice to follow this and that there's something to fight for. You know, with it being real events in history, you start realizing that there's something to fight for, there's something to start talking about because the world is starting to push, especially in this day and age, they're starting to push a certain agenda that you're gonna start seeing a lot more that this is not the first time that this has happened. This has been happening since the beginning, that consistently the world and the, the enemy is trying to push this way and that the more and more we have I guess you could say grown in society from you know the Old Testament till now is that more and more consistently we the our people have tried to break away from this and that this is why the world is like this now because we've been consistently trying to break away from this it's been happening since the beginning it's been happening since Adam and Eve that we've consistently done evil and that's what you end up saying and number three we'll get to is especially when you read the Gospels you will start realizing that there is a God and that he does care about you he does love you and that you're not alone you know I think depression and anxiety and you know even just hopelessness you get to that point in life because you believe that you are alone you believe that there's nothing else but you and that you need a woman and that you need certain things in order to feel happy but what ends up happening when you read the Bible you start seeing that there's a real thing these are real events and that these are the ways that you should be as you start realizing which I'll give you a personal um, experience that there is a God and that he cares about you and that you're not alone that you have him he you've had him since the beginning he's consistently been there he's just been waiting for you and I'll give you like I said my personal example is that I remember when I first started going to church just a church you know just I started going there I didn't read the Bible yet I had just stopped into church a couple times and what ended up happening is I started doing the same thing I always did you know and I did something different this time what I decided to do was I turned over and I asked God to basically show me that he was real you know because I didn't truly believe and I'll never forget this that out of nowhere where my phone I wasn't touching it and it was about a foot away from me as I say this my flashlight just turns on out of nowhere and ever since then there's been consistent things that have continued to happen and what you start realizing is that yes our God is not the one that's going to sit there and give you the super easy life and just say here's millions of dollars and here's everything because you would probably turn evil and you would probably not do good but what he's gonna do is he's gonna give you a life that he will consistently build you make you better make you stronger make you you know everything that you should be in order to live the the best life that you possibly can Many people, what you end up seeing, especially in the world, is that they think the best life that you can live is the easiest one. And that's not the case. It's actually the one that you go through a lot of hardships leads to the best life. That's what a lot of people don't understand, is that God will always be with you, but your life is going to be difficult no matter what, especially in this day and age. And the easier your life is, the more miserable it gets. So you start realizing that you can start taking the road of least traveled and God will always be with you and I realized that in that very moment and that's when I started reading the Bible every single day and now it's been a consistent thing that I can't really go to bed without reading a verse from the Bible because again like I said you sum all these up you're gonna learn about traits to be more masculine you're gonna learn about history and what actually happened in our history and how you've been brainwashed consistently since your childhood to be a certain way and that at the end of the day it's not real and that you have been brainwashed to getting away from this because this is the truth of life and Jesus is the way the truth and the life and it's real you you start believing this and things change for you life becomes more not easy but comforted because you know that God is always with you because like I said, at the end of the day, the word of God will be like folly to those who are perishing, 
but it will be like the power of God to those who believe. <laughs> smells like hard work and determination, boys. Hit that like and subscribe if you like this video. I appreciate all of you very much. Praise God, love God. He's great all the time. In Jesus' name, love you all. Peace.